Hey guys, Wally here. I'm not sure if this is working because we're having problems with Google as usual. So I just thought I'd do another uh, trailer finds video, show you a few things that I found. Um, I had this big uh, Rubbermaid tub full of crap. I'm not going to go through every piece individually, but I thought I'd give you a general idea of what we have in there. Um, there's a bunch of these little miscellaneous farm manuals. There's, as you can see, there's stacks upon stacks of it. So I'll just cut some down in there as we go. Um, some more. I'll show a few individual ones. I get them out of here. I kind of wanted to give you an idea of we're in there. They're all individually packaged, and you know they're in like binders and stuff originally, I guess, but it's been taken out. And then um, here's to give you an idea of what they are. There's um, some uh, ink blotters in there. There's some old rodeo programs. Looks like I'm getting a little glare from the plastic there. Sorry about that. Um, the cow's udder. That's from some kind of uh, University of Minnesota newsletter type thing. And this is mostly what it is. These parts catalogs and instruction manuals for case uh, farm equipment. Um, that's pretty much 90% of it or more. There's a few John Deere ones, but you know, these are all written on the John Deere. The other ones are, are in good shape, the, the case manuals. Um, and there's some newer ones from the, I guess it's from the 50s. <clears throat> There's a few more. Just different um, types of equipment. Parts catalog, manuals. Like I said, it's mostly case. Um, and there's a couple of these agriculturalist newspapers from uh, 1896 from Minneapolis. Um, I don't know if those are really worth much, but it's kind of cool to have. And there's these, I never came across these before. It's a flight diary and expense log from um, Standard Oil. It's just like a little log that you mark in, you know, your expenses when you're traveling. So a few of those in there. Um, and there was a Two or three of these, it's, um, let's see, standard oil telephone order tablet pad, whatever you want to call it. And um, some more instruction manuals. This is uh, McCormick Deering. Um, there's a John Deere operating manual. It doesn't have any cool graphics or anything on it. Uh, another case piece. More case. Uh, let's see, parts catalog for a number 44 hydraulic, <laughs> whatever that is. I don't know. Um, and then uh, I thought this was kind of cool. I don't know what year this is from. It's a uh, boat manual or brochure, probably. I haven't even looked at it yet. Let's pull it out of there and see. Uh, it's just kind of like tips for your trailer, that kind of thing. How to outboard motor, I guess. And. Um, some different like advertising brochures. More. Well, I'm done with all those here. <laughs> Here's a uh, outboard motor catalog. Yeah, because it shows you all the different boats and stuff you can order. That's from, does it say, 1957. And I think I showed you these before in the last video, but I came across some more. These Eagle Hitch brochures. Put some neat little graphics in there. So, probably have a dozen or so of those by now. Then, uh, this is kind of unusual. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if you can look, I guess you stick somebody's photo in there and then you just kind of move it back and forth and he makes like a goofy face. Like, see his mouth moving, his eyes roll in the back of his head. It's got a little um, um, Christmas seal stamp to it for like 1924. So, I don't think it's really worth much more than a couple bucks, but it's kind of a uh, let's see here. Then we've got some good surprise toys in there. Um, we have this little weather uh, station, you know, for like the, um, oh, it measures like temperature, humidity, that kind of thing. I come across these things all the time for some weird reason. But, um, you know, they make like five, ten bucks. And uh, I've got a little 
indoor wall thermometer, fill in the box, maybe five bucks. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got a couple board games here. Um, the Man from Uncle Card Game, um, still sealed in the, let me get this out of here, pretty delicate, um, still sealed in the cellophane, except for on the back, the cellophane's got a big tear in it, but that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, then we've got this, I don't even know what you call this thing, you put these little musical sheets, I guess you'd say, and you play along with it. Um, I looked that up. They're not really worth a lot. Maybe five, ten dollars. We got a see those all kinds of different bottle openers. I haven't gone through to see what manufacturers, but looks like the cans, pours, pretty much the stuff you come across all the time. So then I have a. Uh, I think this is from the 1940s, just from the hairstyle on it. The infrared heat applicator. I followed the, the directions and it actually works. What you do is just plug this in for like 15 minutes and this thing, I mean, it gets hotter than hell and you massage whatever area is aching. So I don't think that's really worth more than maybe five, ten dollars of curiosity there. But, um, and I came across the New York State Coaster Collectors books or newsletters. Just kind of goes through and shows you all these different. I don't know if you're able to see that, sorry. Yeah, I can hardly see anything here because Google is really shaky there, so I don't know if this is going to turn out, but I'll keep going for the hell of it. There's a few of them in there, different volumes. And then I thought these were kind of interesting. They're old back issues of a American collector. They're not, you know, worth more maybe a dollar or two a piece, but it's kind of neat to go through and see what was, you know, what they were talking about back in the day, and you know, they have some pretty interesting articles. There's a bunch of those, and then another little game. I don't know if you guys remember this. I had something similar to this when I was a little kid. Where you put the little marble on there, and you got to kind of move it around with the little knobs here. Um, again, that's probably no more than five, ten, twenty dollars. Oh, let's see what else we have here. I didn't take these out, sorry. <laughs> Some humbles that are in the box. Let's see if I can get it open here. So, oh, yeah. I think it's in there. Maybe not. It's pretty light. Might be empty here. Let's see. Oh, there's something in there. Well, it's in plastic. So, let's say cattails. So, and I wouldn't think, I've come across some of these before, I wouldn't think those are too valuable, you know, because that's, they're not the really cool old, you know, rare hummels or anything like that, it's just the modern day mass produced stuff, you know, probably 10, 15 bucks a piece. And there's another one, oh, here's a picture on it, this one is called Jingling Bells, you see the little kids there, that's a Berta hummel, and let's see, got... This thing here, I've looked this up, but I don't know if that's what it really is. It says it's a, um, or on here it doesn't say it, but online I saw someone, I think on eBay had one, saying that it was a, uh, a, a flaming drink lighter, which I don't know, I guess it, you've got the inside like that, it's got this little contraption, you put the batteries in there, and then if you can see this, probably not, but anyway. It sparks. I don't know if this is supposed to flame or what it's supposed to do. And it says um, Seagram's Crown Royale Genuine Hand Cut Crystal. So you know you're looking for some quality there. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's really worth anything. I think they had like $80 on theirs or something, but I don't know. I don't even know if it really works like it's supposed to, but I doubt it's worth that much money. It's, it's kind of beat up. You can see on the front of that one it's, it's all curled up and it's not really good shape, but use it as a paperweight or something. Uh, let's see, found some uh, Tonka, pretty beat up, but I could still get maybe five, ten dollars out of this, I think. And let's see, I found a big jug, doesn't have any markings, so just a generic jug, you know, a few bucks on those, those actually sell pretty well, um, even though they're, you know, no name or anything, company on there. Uh, this was kind of cool, because we found it in a box um, that had a big uh, box of um, old wax candles on top of it, and it had leaked through. The, the, the candles had melted over the years or whatever, and 
seep through, so the insides, you know, covered in, in wax. I got most of it off. It was really just crusted on there. We couldn't hardly read it. I just took a hair dryer and kind of dripped it off as most as I could, or as best as I could. What it is, it's a Popeye game where you, you set it up like this, and I can get that up there for you. Put the pipe in his mouth, and you throw these little rings around the pipe. So... That's kind of cool. I think, if I remember right, that was either from the 30s or the 40s. I don't remember what they were what they were going for, but not a terrible amount, but maybe 25 bucks. I think it was. Could be wrong. Um, let's see. Then we've got this little jack-o'-lantern lantern. You flip this little switch, and it's supposed to turn on. Um, it doesn't have a, any batteries in it, and then also doesn't have a bulb. So I need to get like a like a flashlight bulb for it, see if it works. But uh, I think it's probably from the 50s or 60s. And then you see, I got a bag of marbles. I don't know if these go with this or not. The bag was in a box, and then the marbles were scattered throughout in the box. And there's, you know, different, you know, the shooters and the, just all kinds of different ones. Nothing really special that I can see, although I don't know a lot about marbles. But just a bag full of marbles. And oh, I got a hula popper. Is that what it says? Yeah, hula popper. Let's see, it's for uh, for bass, the bait of champions. Yeah, um, I looked these up, and these were all over the place. So I've real really no clue. It looks to be in pretty good shape, and it's still in the original box. With the the box is you know pretty banged up, and um, but the. The lure inside actually is in really nice shape. It's got like the little instruction manual in there, and um, I don't know. I've seen this for like five dollars to over fifty dollars, so I really don't have a clue on that. I just throw it up on eBay and see what it brings. And then let's see. I've got. I'm not going to go through all of these individually either. It would take a lot of time, but um, found a ton of old spice tins, old box of them here, and there's a. This is probably the, at least for around here, um, Jewett Brothers. That was a local local place. They had them all over South Dakota. So it's a little little better than some of the generic ones. I think. Um, so there's like all kinds of them in there. Yeah, we'll get a better shot. I know there's also a big Rubbermaid tub filled with those in that unit. So I have to go back in there and do some more digging. And then let's see. I think this is not quite the last. Let's see. I got some. Old medicine bottles. This is Dr. Miles Restorative Nervine. And these are actually in better shape than I normally find bottles. They're not as nasty inside as you normally, you know, when you find them with that gunk. This one's got a little bit of that gunk in there. Um, let's see, this is Allen's Lung Balsam. Doesn't that sound good? Lung Balsam. I don't know what the hell that is. But <laughs> you know, you got extract, extract of Witch Hazel from FR Foster Druggist. In Delavan, Illinois, it looks like it says that Delavan, Delavani. So, neat little bottle. I don't think these bottles really worth too much, a couple bucks a piece, maybe. Um, this one was kind of cool. It's a uh, old aftershave bottle that kind of looks like a, a little cork topper. Looks like it's maybe, I don't know what that is, some kind of pot metal or something. And here was the um, Wedgwood. Uh, trinket box. I've seen these all over the place too. Um, I see these anywhere from like say ten dollars, and then if you go to like um, replacements.com, it's that website that sells all the um, um, replacement like glassware and um, silverware, that type of thing. They're really high for all their stuff. I think they had it for like a hundred and twenty dollars, which I don't think it's worth anywhere near that. But I thought that was kind of cool. And this one was. It was really cool. Um, not a board game, but I found a box full of all kinds of these weird, like, cut-out dolls. And, um, I just took this one. I thought it was an actual game at first. I just grabbed it because it was Flintstones or whatever, and it was looked pretty nice. And then um, I opened it up, and it's never been used. Whoops. It's still got the seal on the, the um, little scissors. And you got all the cutouts. None of them have ever been cut out. Uh, I looked this one up. I believe it's from 1964. 
by uh, Whitman. That's the company that actually does all the old uh, blue coin folders. Um, last one I saw that sold on eBay sold for, I think, 128 bucks, something like that. And that one was not used either. And so I think that is about it. That's all I have for now. So did a little bit of digging in the trailer. So I'm going to be doing, or the storage unit from the trailer, I should say. Um, I'm going to go out there here pretty soon, too, after I, I'm going to price a bunch of this stuff, take some out to my booth, and um, I'll update you guys some more when I do some more digging when I get off my lazy butt. So, and then I'm working on a few other videos I want to do. So we'll see how that all pans out. If I can uh, stop being lazy for y'all. So I guess that's it for now. So questions or comments, email me, text me, whatever. See you guys later.